Hello students, I am Moshumi Moitra from Techno India Group Public School, Shiliguri. Today I am here to discuss Mathematics of Class 12. This is Chapter 4, Determinants. So the first thing is, you have to know what is determinants. For every square matrix, A is equal to small a i j that is each element of the matrix of order n we can associate a number that is called determinant of the square matrix a so suppose a matrix a is a b c d and we can denote it that under this modular sign a or we can uh, tell this as determinant a so Next thing is we have to find out value of the determinant. So we can get value of the determinant of order 1 that means that uh, matrix or that determinant that element only. Then value of the determinant of order 2 we can find out only the cross multiplication. Suppose A, B, C, D that which example is given here only A, B, C, D. So uh, cross multiplication means we uh, the result will be A into D minus c into b now i am showing you one example that is value of determinant of order 3 suppose the determinant a is a b c the first row second row d e f and the third row is g h i now for the value of determinant we can get uh, this value using either row 1, row 2, row 3 or any one column, column 1, column 2, column 3. So I am I have used here the first row elements that is A, B, C. So the first element for this value of the determinant is A into the first row, first column omitted. Then under determinant there will be E, F, G, H and I. Then minus second element of the first row into determinant d f g i then plus third element of first row into this first row and third column omitted so d e g h under determinant next is a into then cross multiplication inside the determinant that is e into i minus h into f minus b under in, inside the bracket d into i minus g into f plus c into d into g sorry d into h minus g into e now one example you can understand better with this that is find the value of the determinant here i have expanded it along the first row and we will what we will get that is 3 into that first row and the first column omitted so under determinant outside the determinant 3 into under determinant 2 minus 3 1 and 7 then minus 4 into again the first row and the second column omitted. So under determinant there will be minus 6 minus 3, 8 and 7 plus 5 into then under determinant minus 6 to 8 and 1. Then under determinant value we have to find out as cross multiplication that is 3 into 7 to 0 14 minus uh, of minus 3. Then minus 4 into minus 42 minus 8 3 is 24. So before there another minus so that means plus 24. Then 5 inside the bracket minus 6 minus 16. So answer will be 13. So this is the process to find out the value of the determinant. Now next part that is properties of determinant. Now property first property the value of the determinant remains unchanged if its rows and columns are interchanged that is one example i have given here one determinant delta is 2 minus 3 5 6 0 4 and 1 5 minus 7 expanding it along first row the same process which one i had shown you before that is 2 into this first column first row omitted then under determinant 0, 4, 5, minus 7. Then minus of minus 3 into first row, first column, second column omitted. Then 6, 4, 1, minus 7. Plus 5 into this first row, third column omitted. So under determinant, there will be 6, 0, 1, 5. 
then again inside the determinant cross multiply multiplication so we will get at the end result is minus 28 now by interchanging rows and columns that means this 2 minus 3 5 now this first row will become the first column same way second row become the second column and third row become the second uh, third column so let us see now so that uh, by changing this rows and columns again expanding it along row 1 ultimately the result is same so we can write delta and transpose of delta determinant and its transpose both are same next property that is if any two rows are interchanged or maybe columns are interchanged then sign of determinant changes that is if the new one is delta 1 that is equal to minus delta it will be after changing next property 3 if any two rows or columns are identical then the value of the determinant is 0 so use uh, of these properties you have to do uh, for the you have to use for the uh, different sums next is property 4 if each element of a determinant is multiplied by a constant k then its values uh, um, multiplied by k value of the determinant multiplied by k so let del determinant here uh, a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 and a3 b3 c3 next delta 1 be the determinant obtained by multiplying the elements of first row by k that is k a1 into k b1 into k c1 then a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 so that means we can write this is equal to k into this a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 so that is equal to k into delta so delta 1 is equal to we can write k into delta next property 5 if some or all elements of a row or a column of a determinant are expressed as the sum of two or more terms then the determinant can be expressed as the sum of two or more determinants that means we if it is given in this form that is a1 plus b1 this is the first row first element then second uh, element of the first row is c1 d1 same way second row first element a2 plus b2 c2 is the second row second element d2 is second row third element then a3 plus b3 is the second third row first element then c3 second element third row third element is d3 so we can write it as a1 c1 d1 a2 c2 d2 a3 c3 d3 and this b1 we can break it from here so b1 c1 d1 b2 c2 d2 b3 c3 d3 plus like this way so two determinants sum of two determinants we can write this is property of sum next one is if each element of any two row or column of a determinant the equimultiples of corresponding elements of other row or maybe column are added then the value of the determinant remains the same so here one determinant is given a1 b1 c1 like this what we have done here column 1 we have written only a1 column 2 multiplied by alpha and column 3 multiplied by beta and then added with this row 1 sorry column 1 so column 1 that is a1 plus alpha beta 1 plus gamma c1 and second row second column third column remain same then again second row first element a2 plus alpha b2 plus uh, beta c2 then the uh, second element of second row same b2 and c2 then third row first element a3 plus alpha b3 plus beta c3 and the uh, third row second element third element remains same so that is a determinant remains unaltered under an operation so which one just now i have told that is we can use here ci uh, is changing as ci 
plus alpha cj plus beta ck or maybe with rho also the same thing we can use. Now I am showing you some uh, sums on using these properties of determinants. Here the question is without expanding proof that this determinant is equal to 0. First row is 2765, second row 3875, third row 5986. So we have to get anyway two identical column or maybe two identical rows. So here we will try to get this, uh, try to write this 65 as uh, something like 2 plus uh, k into something like this way we can write. So what I have done here, this 65 I have break it like this 2 plus 7 into 9. Then 75, 3 plus 8 into 9 and this 86, 5 plus 9 into 9. So that you can see, first thing is, this is, a, we can use the property of sum. So we can break it like this, the first column 2, 3, 5, second column 7, 8, 9 and the third column 2, 3, 5 plus 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, that is first two columns are same and the third column will be 7 into 9, 8 into 9 and 9 into 9. So from here what we can take 9 we can take common outside and for the first determinant this first column and the third column are identical. So the value of this determinant is 0 and for the second determinant 9 is common. So we have to take it out 9 outside and then we can see that the second column and the third column are identical. So these also will be 0. So obviously the result is getting, we are getting result 0. Another problem. For this sum on properties of determinants, we have to prove that B plus C, Q plus R, Y plus Z, this is the first row, then second row C plus A, R plus P, z plus x then third row a plus b p plus q x plus y is equal to 2 into this matrix a p x b q y c r x here we have used for the third row the property of sum so the third row now become a p x plus b q y there in the second determinant and yeah. first row and the third second row are same next step we have used two properties that is row 2 is changing like row 2 minus row 3 and for the second matrix we have used row 1 is changing like row 1 minus row 3. So after using this property we are getting the first determinant second call second row now C R Z third row become uh, now A P X here the second um, determinant first row is CRZ and the third row is BQY. Again another property we have used here that is row 1 changes like row 1 minus row 2 and the second matrix row 2 is changing like row 2 minus row 1 and we have got like this type of two matrix. Next step, we have used our row 2 and row 3 interchanged. R2, that is row 2 and row 3, we have interchanged and the second matrix row 1 and row 2 interchanged. And then again, row 1 and row 2 interchanged in the first matrix and second matrix row 2 and row 3 interchanged. So what we are getting, two same determinant we are getting. So that we can write it now 2 into APX, BQY and CRX. That means what we have to prove. This type of sums are also very important but short questions are coming on this. Choose correct answer. Let A be a square matrix of order 3 by 3. Then determinant K into A is equal to which one that you have to find out. Suppose A is a matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix of uh, with elements A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2 and A3, B3, C3. Now K into A means each element of the determinant we have to multiply with K. 
दैट इज के ए वन के बी वन के सी वन के ए टू के बी टू के सी टू के ए थ्री के बी थ्री के सी थ्री सो वट वी कैन टेक डू नाउ वी कैन टेक फ्रॉम ईच कॉलम और मे बी फ्रॉम ईच रो वी कैन टेक ए कॉमन के कॉमन सॉरी सो फर्स्ट रो इफ वी टैक एंड टेक आउट वन के फ्रॉम द सेकेंड रो ऑल्सो एनदर के एंड फ्रॉम द थर्ड रो ऑल्सो एनदर के सो वट वी आर गेटिंग एट द एंड के क्यूब इन टू डिटर्मिनेंट ए दिस टाइप ऑफ सम्स आर कमिंग फॉर शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज एरिया ऑफ ट्राइंगल सो फॉर एरिया ऑफ ट्राइंगल इफ थ्री भार्टिस आर गिवेन दैट इज एक्स वन वाई वन एक्स टू वाई टू एंड एक्स थ्री वाई थ्री इट कैन बी रिटर्न इन द फॉर्म ऑफ डिटर्मिनेंट that is that uh, area of the uh, triangle delta we can write is equal to half into under determinant the first row elements are x1 y1 1 second row elements are x2 y2 1 the third row elements are x3 y3 1 since area is positive quantity so we have to always take the absolute value of the determinant and if area is given use both positive or negative values that is suppose uh, any uh, vertices is unknown but area is given then we can find out um, that is uh, area we can use either maybe plus something or minus something both we can use for the calculation or sometimes sometimes given three collinear points um, you have to find out so area of the triangle formed will be zero so this is the area of triangle formula we can uh, use now in sum find the area of a triangle with the vertices 1 0 6 0 and 4 3 so direct formula we can use and uh, then uh, determinant value of the determinant of order 3 how we have find out that way we can get it so half into this since it is a positive one so no need to use a modular sign that means direct it is 15 by 2 square unit so this is the process to find out area of triangle now i will explain to you minors and cofactors now minor of an element aij of a determinant is the determinant obtained by deleting its ith row and jth column in which the element aij lies so minor of an element aij is denoted by capital mij and cofactor of an element aij is denoted by capital aij which is defined as aij is equal to minus 1 to the power i plus j into mij so this is minor and cofactor to get adjoint you will require the cofactor so let us do with this example so i am explaining here one sum to find minors and cofactors of the elements of determinants this 2 minus 3 5 that is the first row elements and 6 0 4 second row elements and third row elements are 1 5 minus 7 so first we have to find out minor of m11 that means minor of the first row first element that is first row and first column we have to omit under determinant there will be 0 4 5 minus 7 and the process to find out this value of the determinant is 0 into minus 7 minus 5 times 4 that is minus 20 is the answer then cofactors that is a11 this is equal to minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1 that is form according to the formula minus 1 to the power i plus j minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1 into minus 20 is equal to minus 20 so next is m12 we have to find out that is under determinant first row and the second column omitted so under determinant there will be 6 4 1 and minus 7 again according to the cross multiplication 6 into minus uh, 6 times minus 7 that is minus 
and 4 times 1 that is minus of 4. So answer is minus 46. Then A12 that is uh, the cofactors of first row second element. This is minus 1 to the power minus 1 plus 2 into power to the, that is minus 1 to the power 3. This is minus and inside the bracket there is minus 46 that is a cofactor uh, minus. So answer is plus 46. So same way we have to get um, minus the, of the third first row third element and the cofactors of first row third element. Then M21, A21, M22, A22, M23, A23 and the next slide is also for uh, minus of, uh, third row first element and then cofactor third row first element. Then third row second element, third row uh, minus and third row second element uh, cofactors and third row third element minus and third row third element cofactors. So these are the process to find out minus and cofactors. So for you uh, getting adjoint we require this cofactors. Next is we have uh, the another uh, part that is adjoint and inverse of matrix. Now adjoint A is transpose of the cofactors. So what is adjoint? Transpose of cofactors. That is transpose means cofactors that row and column interchange. That is here this capital AIJ this is the cofactor of each element small aij. Now a square matrix A is said to be singular if determinant A is 0 and it is said to be a non-singular matrix then determinant A not equals to 0. And to get a matrix invertible this is must to get that is determinant A not equal to 0. Now this is uh, the formula to get A inverse that is equal to 1 by determinant A into adjoint A. So obviously determinant A should not be 0 because denominator cannot be 0 for a fraction. Now if determinant 0 then inverse does not exist that we can say. So uh, this adjoint and inverse of matrix is required to get A inverse. Now this is one example I have shown here to get uh, to find inverse of matrix this 2 minus 1 0 0 1 2 and 1 1 0. So using this formula we have to find out inverse. Now here uh, for this first thing is we have to know determinant A is uh, either 0 or not. If it is 0 then we cannot get inverse. So first thing determinant A we have to find out that is expanded it along row 1. We have got the value of the determinant is minus 6 which is not equal to 0. That means determinant A is non-singular and inverse exists. So uh, after that we have to get adjoint that is all the cofactors first we have to find out. That is A11, A12, A13, then A21, A22, A23, then A31, A32, A33. Next, adjoint A means transpose of these cofactors. So after that, this row and column inter after uh, interchanging, we have got this adjoint A. So now we have to use inverse. To get inverse, the formula is 1 by determinant A into adjoint A. Already we have got this determinant A value is minus 6 into adjoint A just now we had got. So now the uh, thing is we have to multiply each element of this adjoint A by minus 1 by 6. So this is the result of A inverse. Next another part is of the determinant that is application of determinants and matrices. Here we can get, uh, we can find the solution of system of linear equations using inverse of matrix. So a system of linear equations is said to be consistent if its solution exists and a system of equation is said to be inconsistent if its solution does not exist. 
so equation this system of linear equations we can write it in the form of ax is equal to b if determinant a not equal to 0 then the system has an unique solution if determinant a is equal to 0 then we have to find out adjoint a into b or if adjoint a into b not equal to 0 then the system of uh, linear equations has no solutions or if adjoint a into b is equal to 0 then the given equation system of linear equations has infinitely many solutions. So now let us see one example of system of linear equations. This type of questions are coming generally with 6 marks. So solve the following system of equations by matrix method. 3 linear equations are given here. 3x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 8. 2x plus y minus z is equal to 1. And 4x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to 4. The system of equations can be written in the form of ax is equal to b where a is this matrix that is the coefficients of the variables that is the matrix now coming 3 minus 2 3 then 2 1 and minus 1 4 minus 3 and 2 then x we can write all the variables in the matrix form x y z and b this is the constant term in the right hand side that also in the matrix form I have written. So for uh, this matrix we have to get a uh, determinant a the value we are getting here minus 17 that is not equals to 0. So we can get a uh, this is a non singular matrix a and we can get uh, a inverse now. So 1 by determinant um, a that is 17 and the adjoint this is the transpose of the adjoint a that means transpose of all the cofactors. Then x is equal to a inverse b. So this with this a inverse b is multiplied. Now using this property of multiplication. This first row first column then second row first column third row first column. We will get the matrix of ordered 3 by 1. Then this minus 1 by 17 is multiplied by each element. We are getting the values are 1 2 3. So comparing this two matrices we are getting x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2 and z is equal to 3. So here in these total slides we have discussed the whole determinants which parts are important. This much for today. Thank you very much.